It's mostly science and fiction. Mostly. Who is Dirk Gently and what the flying flippin' fudge happened in this show? The term holistic is key to understanding the timeline and the wacky events that took place. Dirk mentions multiple times that he harnesses the power of interconnectedness. We are talking about cause and effect. Everything is connected. Everything happens for a reason. The universe has a plan. Everything affects everything. A butterfly farts in Africa which causes a turnip to explode in a supermarket. Or something like that. This is what ties the whole show together. For lack of a better word, fate. Todd Brotsman, aka Elijah Woods, aka Frodo, is a dropkick loser who just lost his job to a series of unfortunate events, which are all connected. He is a no-hoper who now thinks he's possibly losing his mind and hallucinating due to seeing himself dressed up as a lunatic in his hotel. An event that subsequently led him to being fired in the first place. Ooh, more interconnectedness. He then meets Dirk, or Dirk meets him, and he becomes his unwilling sidekick. He has a sister, Amanda, aka Hannah Marks, aka chick who sometimes thinks she's burning to death or drowning to death but really isn't. This is caused by a fictional disease funnily named pararibulitis, a disease that causes hallucinations to feel real. They are more often than not quite violent. Aside from being a pretty cool character, her position in the whole series of events doesn't really have a grand influence other than some, I guess you could say, significant character development for Frodo. Oh yeah, and she's probably psychic and was the only one who remembers what Zachariah's map looked like, but more on that later. Dirk Gently, aka Samuel Barnett, aka the holistic detective that which the show is named after, aka Project Icarus, he's an annoyingly charming dickweed who tries to solve crime simply by existing. He believes that coincidences are not coincidences sisters, and goes on to help solve Solve puzzles by simply following random or not so random events, clues that uncontrollably fall into his lap. Despite being super annoying, you kinda end up loving him. Dirk, the rowdy three, and this filthy bitch are all escapees of an experimental government military project called Project Blackwing. At this stage, not much is known about Project Blackwing other than that there are numerous subjects with a variety of different powers, I guess you could say, and this old codger, Colonel Scott Riggins, aka Milgel Sandoval, aka former head of the now discontinued secret military government Project Blackwing, is tasked with tracking them down. Due to budgetary restrictions and the fact that his research at Project Blackwing was inconclusive and that over 30 of the potentially dangerous subjects escaped and are still at large, Old Mate is given this dopey fucking cunt as backup and not much else. The Rowdy Three, even though there are four of them, feed on emotional energy or souls. The more emotional, the more powerful the soul, the tastier they seem to be. This doesn't really seem to hurt the host, in fact it seems to help chill Amanda the fuck out, which is why she feels safe with them. It is also what triggered her psychic powers. Is she a psychic or were her visions simply a side effect of the soul eating? At this stage we don't quite know. We also don't really know why the Rowdy Three have this power or ability either. I mean, I mean, what, what's the purpose of this? We're gonna have to wait to find out. Disgusting filthy bitch, aka Bart Curlish, aka Fiona Durif, aka not so revoltingly putrid in real life, is a psychic sort of holistic anti-Dirk. In other words, she has the same hunches as Dirk and believes the universe is guiding her, which, you know, it, it, it bloody is. She can't even get shot. And when they finally meet, all the flashbacks happen and they recognize each other from the olden days, probably the bloody Blackwing Labs. Her sidekick, also faded, is this dude, Ken, aka Mop... Flow, aka computer electronics dude. Then there's this chick, Farah Black, aka Jad Ashititi, aka sexy badass with awesome hair. She was the bodyguard, more specifically the head of security for Patrick Spring, aka Julian Mann, aka the dude who died and started this whole shebang. Farah was close with Patrick Spring and his daughter, who went missing shortly after Patrick's death, and Farah has been looking for her ever since. She got captured by these dickheads, which we'll talk about in a bit. Patrick Spring, millionaire, billionaire dude, high hired Dirk to investigate his death six weeks before he even died. He is the key to everything, which I will explain in just a moment. His daughter is Lydia Spring, aka Alison Thornton, aka Dog Girl. She has a mind swapped with the mind of this dude's dog. This dude, Gordon Rimmer, aka A.A. Ron Douglas, aka Chief Tyrrell, and his pack of bald dickheads are basically just a bunch of cunts. They found a machine that enabled them to swap bodies with anyone. Basically, you hook up some sucker over here, then you stand here, then you flick this switch here, and shazam -o! Your minds, your consciousness has been swapped. But more about the machine later. About 50 years ago, they started swapping minds with people and disposing of the old bodies, essentially achieving immortality by constantly uploading into fresh hosts and destroying the old one. They formed a cult following and have continued to murder people and take over their lives ever since. Chief Tyrrell, before becoming Chief Tyrrell, got cocky one day and took over the body of a rock star, this bag of farts. 
After becoming a superstar and rocking the world for many years with his own competitions and albums, he was forced by a higher, though not really higher, but let's say more influential member of the cult to swap into Fatso McSylon Lover. 15 years later, present day, is more or less when we meet him in the show. There are several other characters that pop in and out, but they impact very little on the whole interconnectedness of the show, like these cops who are working on Lydia Springs' missing persons case. So, what the fucking fuck happened? Well, just like any time travel thing, it's complicated, full of paradoxes, and it's basically as stupid as dried up white dog shit. But, it's a lot of fun. So here's how it all went down, man. In the 1880s, Zachariah Webb, a scientist genius man with sick mutton chops, was trying to invent a time machine. But, as Dirk rightly states, it only half worked sending only energy through time, not matter. It took the souls right out of their bodies, sending them into the ether and leaving behind a dead husk. He kind of fixes it and tries again to send his dog into the future, but instead accidentally sends the machine into the future. It later comes back slightly modified with a note from Dirk Gently covered in blood. Zachariah believes something has gone horribly wrong and for some reason sees no other option but to send himself into the future to investigate. He lands in the 1960s where a gang of hippie dickheads living in his old house found his machine and started to worship it. Zachariah tries to get his machine back but the crazy hippies won't let him. Realizing he couldn't defeat them because they were too numerous and it's all very scary, Zachariah runs away. He concludes that he needs power and money to defeat them and get his machine back. Being a super smart inventor, Zachariah finds a way to turn his time machine into an infinite energy machine and subsequently makes himself a large fortune. He takes the name Edgar Spring. So, Zachariah Webb, Edgar Spring and Patrick Spring are all the same person, just at different points in time. He time travelled through history, changing his name along the way to hide his real identity. He then goes back to his machine, but the hippie dickheads have exploited a glitch in the machine and found a way to swap souls, and thus, over time, the hippie nutbars turned into soul swapping, kidnapping, people murdering, cult bald dickheads. They killed themselves the men of the machine. The cult wankers grew in size and power and one day confronted Edgar Spring to try to get his infinite energy machine. Zachariah tells them to eat all the dicks and thus a secret war between them starts. During a particular brutal battle, Edgar Spring meets his wife and falls in love. They then shag and pump out a baby, Lydia. But then after a bit, in 2001, the dickheads kill his wife. Spring loses his shit man and decides to jump to the very end, 2015, in order to catch the dickheads off guard and end it all. This is where we meet the steampunk badass motherfucking Zachariah Webb Spring and where Dirt gives us the breakdown that I have entirely just stolen from that one scene. Steampunk Spring goes to confront Chief Tyrrell at the hotel, the very one where Frodo is working. In the hotel, Chief Tyrrell is blackmailing a much older Spring with his daughter. See, earlier that week, Chief Tyrrell kidnapped Spring's daughter. He's holding her captive by mind-swapping her into a dog and intends to use her as blackmail to obtain the unlimited energy machine. His endgame is ultimately total power and probably world domination. I mean, think about it. Unlimited energy and immortality all rolled into one? Pretty sick, dude. Steampunk Spring bursts into the room and is like, the fuck, what the hell's going on here? That's when a weaponized soul in the form of a hammerhead shark in a kitten's body gets released and shreds the shit out of everybody. The weaponized soul was made by the dickhead gang. Before he dies, Older Spring says it was always meant to end this way. His main regret is that he neglected his daughter. So Steampunk Spring heads back in time to be with his daughter, but ultimately this leads him ending up in the same spot. Spring ends up becoming the older version of himself. This tells us that no matter what, they are all stuck in a time loop they can't escape from. At least, Spring is. So yeah, it's a fucking time paradox. No matter how you look at it, it kind of won't make sense. Zachariah Webb travelled to the future because he got a note from Dirk. But Dirk wouldn't have sent the note if Zachariah Webb didn't go to the future. But Zachariah Webb did go to the future because of the note, but the note wouldn't have been sent if he didn't. So which came first? It's like a chicken egg situation. No matter which way you look at it, it, it won't... One of them had to come first, but none of them could have come first. And this happens a lot with lots of different things within the show. So really, it, you just try not to think about it too much. To simplify things, let's look like this. Zachariah and the dickhead gang are stuck in a shitty time loop, and they need to break the loop in order to continue into the future. But, unfortunately, this is impossible, as Zachariah Webb discovers he always needed to die in order to save his daughter, which is why the older version of himself says it's always meant to be, or always meant to end like this, or whatever the fuck it is that he says. The loop gets broken sort of with the help of stinky bitch and computer nerd and pretty much everyone else, and life goes on. Lydia gets put back into a body, and the gang moves on. So to summarize, we have two main plots 
going on. We have the time traveling inventor Zachariah Spring, who is stuck in a time loop fighting a war with the bloody body mind swapping dickheads. Everyone here is normal human being with no special powers, unless you include being very smart or being very bald. Then we have the magical people who are on the run from the government, including Dirk, the Rowdy Boys, Grotty Skank, and a bunch of others we haven't met yet. They escaped from the experimental project and have been on the run ever since, with the government trying to track them down. The two plots cross over when Dirk is hired by Zachariah. All other characters are intertwined through pretty much association only. So the body swapping dickheads all end up dead, as do the cops and a few other people, thus concluding this chapter and ending the time traveling story arc. Dirk sends the machine back with the note, thus in the most current timeline there are no more magical soul swapping machines, no more infinite energy machines and no more bloody time machines thus ending the Zachariah arc and paving the way for different future adventures. At the end of the season, Dirk Genitals, Frodo and Afro Mama team up to become a cool nerdy detective agency and we are left with some interesting leads that will trigger more crazy adventures to be had in season 2. Most notably, Dumbfuck Shitface gets hired to track down the rest of the Blackwing escapees and pretty much kill them all. He also has to kill anyone involved with or with knowledge of the Blackwing project, like this poor dude. Following season will likely focus heavily on the government versus Blackwing subjects arc and it looks like Frodo actually does have parabulitis. So, fun times to be had in the future. I, I haven't read the book, so I don't actually know what's going to happen, but yeah, I mean, based on the TV series, that's pre pretty much what's going to happen. Pro probably, I don't know. There's a few things I didn't mention, like how Patrick Spring buried the machine parts, and then he left a bunch of clues and maps so that only Dirk could find them, and then thus leading to the situation that happened. So, that's what the whole maze thing is about, and the maps and all that sort of stuff. It's basically a trail of breadcrumbs for Dirk to find. Again, it's paradoxical because he wouldn't have done that if he hadn't met Dirk, but it, the only way for him to meet Dirk is if he had have done it, blah blah blah. Time paradoxes. Fuck me, fuck time paradoxes. They are a lot of fun though. The end. P.S. One thing I couldn't stop thinking about was like, Lydia Spring has been in a dog for about a week. No worries, dog Lydia can piss and shit wherever she wants. But dog has been in Lydia Spring's body for about a week. Yes worries, she's fully clothed, and looks like she's been wearing the same clothes. Has she been pissing and shitting into her pants the entire time? That's fucking gross. I mean, I mean, what the, what the, what the fuck? That's a loose end, man. That's a fucking loose end that didn't tie off. I mean, did, she must stink. Probably worse than this grotty bitch. If everything is connected, then so is my podcast. 30 years apart, when my father and I discuss trending issues in science, medicine, technology, pop culture, science fiction, and more. Check it out. It's fated.